Welcome to Peace Cranes. In fact, to the very first in our series of events in advance of Peace Cranes, this new Turing exhibition of contemporary visual and performing arts, exploring the cultural legacy of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Peace Cranes will hopefully open to the public in a non-virtual exhibition space next year, in August 2021, as part of the Edinburgh International Summer Festivals. In fact, just before COVID-19 um, outbreak, the pandemic outbreak and lockdown, we were well on track to, to launch the Peace Crane exhibition at Edinburgh's Cornerstone Centre as part of um, this uh, year's Summer Festival. Um, but also as part of the worldwide peace initiatives uh, throughout this August to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the um, atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Well, just like the other partner uh, organizations, we have had to go virtual this year. But instead of um, uh, trying to virtualize the entire exhibition, um, we've decided to curate a program of online events as precursors, as a prelude to the upcoming uh, Peace Crane exhibition. Um, and we decided to feature only some of the exhibiting artists. But let me unravel this proverbial we. Who are we? The Peace Cranes exhibition is an initiative of the Edinburgh Peace and Justice Centre. And as an independent curator of contemporary art, I was appointed the, the Peace Cranes exhibition curator by the centre following their open curatorial call. My name is Ileana Netkova, and I'm very honoured to have joined the, um, the Edinburgh Peace and Justice Centre on this particular exhibition journey, especially now that uh, P&J, um, as this affectionately known, is about to turn 40 years old next month. Um, I'm also doubly honoured to be curating on behalf of an organisation whose values I strongly support and whose vision for peace I share. I'm also very pleased um, that um, today, uh, for our first Peace Cranes pre-exhibition event, we have not only one, I'll be joined not only by one, but three of the, the PNJ members. Firstly, I would like to give a shout out to um, the PNJ trustee and a fellow art historian, Heather Kiernan. Heather has kindly volunteered to be the co-curator of the Peace Cranes uh, exhibition with me and I've had the pleasure of putting together this, the, our pre-exhibition program um, with her and the rest of the, the team at PNJ. The next in line of introductions is uh, another member, um, Shoji Musazawa, um, an educator and translator uh, based in Scotland, um, who will appear in our uh, Peace Cranes exhibition as part of the, the crew of one of the documentary films we've identified and that will be featured in our screening program. Uh, Shoji is also known as PNG Origami Master and over the last few years um, he has delivered Origami Peace Cranes exhibition, uh, in fact workshops, to school children in the Scottish borders in their actual classrooms. Now, today Shoji will be assisted only by one of his pupils, Magnus Byrne, who is also on the call today. Um, and uh, um, Shoji has promised us uh, to share, to promise to share with us his top tips and even secrets of, for folding a piece cranes uh, uh, in the first half of, uh, of our webinar. The third PNJ member um, here with us is Brian Larkin a committed disarmament activist and currently the coordinator of PNJ, uh, who will shortly unveil the, um, the stories of the two women to whom our Peace Cranes exhibition is dedicated to. And these are Sadako Sasaki and Atsuku Bechako, the two women who embody our hopes for peace and nuclear disarmament, especially through their life-affirming act of folding origami peace cranes. Uh, but yes, these two women, but I, I would, I'm tempted to dedicate uh, our peace cranes exhibition to yet another equally inspiring woman, 
Mary Robinson, the former president of Ireland and now the chair of the elders. This is the organization founded by Nelson Mandela in 2007 and comprised of an independent group of world leaders working together for peace, justice, or human rights. And especially um, in light of their uh, Peace Cranes uh, 2020 uh, campaign for remembering Hiroshima and Nagasaki by inviting everyone of us to fold a Peace Crane. And on this note, over to you, Brian. Hi, everyone. So I'm going to tell you why we make origami cranes for peace and why the Peace and Justice Center have been doing this big project to make 140,000 origami peace cranes. This is a story, two stories really, uh, about a girl and a woman, both Japanese. Um, it starts over 75 years ago when Britain and my country, the United States, uh, were at war with Japan. It starts with a little girl called Sadako Sadaki, S -S Sasaki. Um, Sadako was born in the beautiful city of Hiroshima. When she was just two years old, the war has been, had been going on for a long time. And my country made a very powerful bomb, a bomb that was more powerful than any bomb ever made. And it was not just more powerful, but it was different. It was an atomic bomb. An American air crew dropped that bomb from an airplane early on the morning of the 6th of August, 75 years ago. Now the atom bomb was so powerful that it destroyed a huge area of the city and created a huge firestorm. Many people were killed right away and many more people were terribly burned in the fires. The explosion sent huge amounts of radioactive material up into the air and in the days and weeks after the bombing, this radioactive dust fell with the rain. It was called black rain because that radioactive rain was deadly poison. The radioactive material that made many more people very sick and in the weeks and months after the bombing, many people died from radiation sickness. Now, Sadako was just a toddler, two years old, and, and she was lucky she was not killed on the day of the bomb. But uh, 10 years later, Sadako, like many other children from Hiroshima and Nagasaki, developed leukemia. She had to go to the hospital to be taken care of. And when she was in the hospital, she heard the legend of the cranes. Now a crane is a tall, graceful bird, like a heron. It walks on long legs in marshy waters. Japanese cranes are white with long legs and a long slender black neck with black tips on their wings, a long sharp beak and a red crown. In Japan, the crane is a mystical creature like the dragon and the tortoise and is said to live for a thousand years. The legend says that anyone who folds 1,000 origami cranes will get a wish granted by the gods. So while she was in the hospital, Sadako started folding origami cranes. I think that Sadako wished to get better. We know she also wished for peace because she wrote, I will write peace on your wings and you will fly all over the world. And Sadako didn't have enough paper, so she used uh, medicine wrappings and asked other patients for the paper from their get well presents. And uh, her friend brought her paper from school to use. Sadly, Sadako died just 12 years old. Some say Sadako made more than 1,000 cranes. Some say she did not manage to fold 1,000 cranes. In any case, after she died, her schoolmates published a collection of her letters and raised money to build a memorial to all the children who had died from the effects of the atomic bomb. 
a golden statue of Sadako now stands in the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park, holding a large golden origami crane. Ever since then, all over the world, people have been making origami cranes as a symbol of peace and of their hopes for disarmament. It became a tradition to send origami cranes to Hiroshima and uh, 1400 of the cranes from our Peace Cranes project will be delivered there with our wishes for disarmament next year. So you see, Sadako's cranes have indeed flown all over the world. Now the Peace and Justice Center's Peace Cranes project was started by Peace and Justice volunteer Atsuko Bachaku, the woman I mentioned almost five years ago. Atsuko came from Japan and took a PhD in history at the University of Edinburgh. She too had heard the story of Sadako and had visited Hiroshima. She sang in a choir and, and helped to raise money for the victims of the Fukushima tsunami. Atsuko brought people together for workshops with the goal of making not 1,000, but 140,000 origami cranes so people could see how many people died in just from that one bomb in 1945. She led workshops at the Peace and Justice Center, at churches and community centers around Edinburgh. Sadly, Atsuko also died and we wanted to fulfill her dreams, so we continued to run workshops and friends have been making cranes in several countries and sending them to us from all parts of Britain, from France, Germany, Canada, New Zealand, and even from Japan. And now we have more than 140,000 origami cranes stored in the box room of a Peace and Justice supporter. So now we want to create that exhibition with these cranes. It will be dedicated to Atsuko and Sadako, and it will take place at the Just Festival in St. John's Church in Edinburgh in 2021. The exhibition will tell the stories of Sadako and Atsuko so that many more people will learn about the terrible effects of nuclear weapons. Now there's one more part of the story to tell. As a PNJ, as a partner uh, in the international campaign to abolish nuclear weapons, uh, the PNJ, along with the uh, 468 organizations around the world, um, was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize because thanks to the hard work of many ICANN activists all over the world, most countries in the world have signed the treaty to prohibit nuclear weapons at the United Nations. When the legislatures of 50 countries have ratified the treaty, it will become international law. 43 countries have done that already. And by this time next year, we hope that 50 countries will have ratified the treaty and nuclear weapons will be banned. We don't expect that all the countries that have nuclear weapons will accept that at first, but in time, we hope that all countries will finally disarm. So our Peace Cranes exhibition next summer will not just remember Sadako and those killed in Hiroshima and, and Nagasaki, but it will celebrate the banning of nuclear weapons. So now I'm going to pass over to Shoji, who's going to teach us all how to make an origami peace crane. Hello, I'm going to show how to make an origami crane. What you need is a flat table, like this one, and square paper. I'm using an origami paper if you don't have origami paper, you can just make a square paper using a printer paper or any advertisement paper. All right, let's start. Now, because it's origami paper, this has one side is a purple color, the other side is white. So it's easy to tell which one is a top and which one is a bottom. Okay, let's start. Top part, top, and you can fold and make a triangle. When you make a triangle, try to make it as precise 
as possible. Okay. So one triangle. Open it and turn 90 degrees around and make another triangle. Okay. Okay. Uh, open it, flip over, and this time fold it and make a rectangular shape and match the size as precisely as you can. Okay, and fold it, open, and make another rectangular shape here. Okay, all right. So when you put this paper on the table, it will be like this. And you pinch two ends like this, and you push it towards the center, then you can make a square. Okay? And one side is open, the other side is not. Okay, so you put the, this square on the table and open side is here. You're going to fold this wing side to the center crease here. So you do this very carefully. Okay, and Turn around, do the same thing on this side. Now, just be careful about this end. Try to make it as clean and precise as you can. All right. So you get this kite shape. You flip over, do the same thing on this side. Fold it to the center and fold it to the center. Okay. Now, so you have this kite shape. Okay. Now you're going to fold this part and Fold back all the way to the center and make this shape. Now, just uh, press hard to make a crease clear, nice and clear. Okay, next step is a bit tricky. You're going to open this. Open this side. Open this side. Now, this is a open side, okay? So, Hold this end, hold this end, and here's a crease here, so you can open this side, and you can make a sort of a boat shape, okay? And as you open it, you can fold toward inside, both end, and if you carefully and slowly press it down, this side will be also folded like this. So you are making a diamond. And, of course, we do the same thing on the other side. Okay, so you open the side, both in. Here's a crease. Now, the crease is going to be reversed, so you just uh, do it carefully and open and fold it here, 
open and hold it toward inside and slowly and carefully press it down okay so you end up with this diamond shape now one side has this mountain this side is free okay it's a separate now here you're going to fold this free side one wing towards the center now this is a bit difficult you don't have to go all the way to the center I'll just give slight space I will explain why or you'll see why okay fold towards the center turn around fold it towards the center but it doesn't have to match exactly the center line okay so I'll show you what I did here you see the gap here which is fine okay do the same thing on this side fold it to the center and fold it to the center okay all right we're almost there now this is going to be the wing as you can see okay so you hold this paper crane this way okay loose end at the bottom and you open this side and lift it as you lift it this side goes inside you fold it inside out outside inside okay like this let's do the other side open this way lift it all the way until it goes to the end and fold it so it should look like this okay now at this stage if it's not exactly precise don't worry uh, if you do this a couple more times you will make uh, your origami perfect okay so one side is going to be tail and the other side is going to be a head whichever you you like uh, you open and fold it just the top then you can fold it back like so okay I'll show you again it was like this open it and bend it and fold inside actually it's quite neat okay then this is it you gently pull the ring like so there's a ring on the crane now it doesn't stand but uh, that's okay all right thank you and enjoy thank you so much master shoji san mm -hmm. and agnes san um, <laughs> and as i mentioned earlier uh for those of you who have just joined us um uh, i'm iliana netkova and uh, um this is uh, the, the first inaugural Peace Cranes um, pre exhibition event uh, run by the Edinburgh Peace and Justice Center. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, in the second and final part of our Peace Crane show and tell session today, we'll hear from some of the other 
uh, peace cranes exhibiting artists. And um, yes, I'll probably do the share screen in a minute. Um, but um, there we go. We'll start with Michael Mears and um, Yuri Yamanaka. Uh, amidst the pandemic and during the lockdown, Heda and I, Heda Kiernan, my co-curator and I, have worked with these acclaimed London-based uh, actors for the stage and screen to produce this pre-recorded uh, six-minute um, long performance for camera uh, you're just about to see. We entitled it The Message, as it was sent to us as a special, special message by Matsui Kazumi, the mayor of the city of Hiroshima on the occasion of the Peace Cranes pre-exhibition events. We do hope that the message will go viral, but you are the very first people to see it. We're very honored to have been sent a message by Matsui Kazumi, the mayor of the city of Hiroshima, on the occasion of the Peace Cranes pre-exhibition events commemorating the 75th anniversary of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. Peace Cranes is an initiative of the Edinburgh Peace and Justice Centre. It's a touring contemporary arts exhibition about the cultural legacy of Hiroshima, which will feature new and existing works by international artists and filmmakers, alongside an artist's installation comprising 140,000 origami peace cranes. The exhibition will launch in August 2021 as part of the Just Festival Edinburgh International Fringe Festival and tour to London and internationally thereafter. More information can be found on the Edinburgh Peace and Justice Centre website. The Mayor's message will now be read out by my colleague, actor Yuri Yamanaka. A message from the Mayor of Hiroshima. It is an honour and a pleasure to send this message on the occasion of the Peace Cranes Pre-Exhibition Online Events, August 2020. On August 6, 1945, the first atomic bomb used in human warfare reduced Hiroshima to rubble in an instant, claiming countless innocent civilian lives. Despite suffering deep physical and emotional scars, the Hibakusha who managed to survive tell their stories, continuously appealing for peace with their conviction, no one else should suffer as we have. However, more than 13,000 nuclear warheads still remain in the world, and a nuclear disarmament is at a standstill. Furthermore, Despite global solidarity becoming ever more important in the fight against COVID-19, a new kind of threat to all of humanity, we see self-centered nationalism in ascendance and tensions heightened by international exclusivity and rivalry around the world today. Our current leaders must recall their courageous predecessors when nuclear superpowers, the US and the USSR, were engaged in a tense, escalating nuclear arms race, their leaders manifested reason and turned to dialogue to seek disarmament. Leaders around the world should pursue negotiations on nuclear disarmament in good faith, as mandated by Article 6 of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and respond to the yearning of civil society for the entry into force of the treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons, a milestone on the road to a nuclear weapon-free world. To achieve a peaceful, sustainable world, each and every one of us must confront our current situation head-on transcend differences of status or opinion, and strive together in the spirit of tolerance toward our ideal. 
to accomplish this, we must never dismiss the atomic bombings and the war as mere events of the past. It is vital that we internalize the progress the Hibakusha and others have made toward a peaceful world and drive steadfastly forward. In order for world leaders to move forward together with them, to advance civil society's ideal, it is of increasing importance that we raise the number of people in civil society who emphasize with the plea of the Hibakusha. A world free from nuclear weapon is the first step toward peace on earth and this concept must become a universal value shared by all humankind. It is therefore truly significant that you have organized this event to appeal for the abolition of nuclear weapons and I extend to you my deepest respect. The city of Hiroshima, together with more than 7,900 mayors for peace member cities from 164 countries and regions, intends to create an environment that encourages world leaders to take steps toward nuclear abolition. I would like to ask all of you to mobilize with us and strive to eliminate the absolute evil that is nuclear weapons to realize lasting world peace. In closing, I extend my best wishes for the great success of the event as well as the good health and happiness of all concerned. August 6, 2020 Matsui Kazumi Meiya The City of Hiroshima Um, at this point, um, I would like to mention that Heather, um, Kieran, and Michael Trait and, and myself, we have been, we've had the privilege to continue working with Michael Mears in all his guises as an actor, as a playwright, as a dramaturg, and a peace activist for each of our other three um, pre exhibition events, so which um, I'll remind you of um, at the end of um, our webinar today. But for now, um, I would like to, to mention that Michael um, is just one of the artists in the forthcoming exhibition. The centerpiece of the Peace Cranes exhibition in 2021, which we hope will tour in 2022, will be a large scale Peace Cranes installation by, them, by the Edinburgh based artist and activist Juliana Capes. And I believe she's on the call today with us. Uh, Juliana is hoping to utilize uh, all the 140,000 um, piece cranes, paper, origami paper cranes, and perhaps we'll go, we can incorporate some of yours that you've just made. Um, but these were initially the ones folded by Atsuko and the hundreds of other volunteers, PNJ volunteers, like um, her from over about five countries uh, who have contributed to the project, uh, a PNJ project so far. Um, Juliana will also hopefully undertake a residency at uh, PNJ and spread the symbolism of the peace cranes and the stories of Sadako and Atsuko to co communities and schools far and wide in the run-up to the peace cranes exhibition. And uh, in addition to Michael and Juliana's involvement, the peace cranes exhibition will also in include a curatorial selection of historically significant and newly commissioned works in photography, in moving image, in sculpture and installation as well as live performance art and activism by internationally, international contemporary artists. And I'm very, very pleased to mention that we have some of them with us on the call today, like Sue Grierson, Pam Skelton and Don Cole, all three um, of them here with us. Thanks for joining as well as Madeleine Huikers, Keiko Sato and Mare Tralla, to mention but a few of the other exhibiting artists and activists confirmed so far. The Peace Cranes exhibition will thus celebrate the coming together of established international contemporary artists, 
as well as coming together with people from many parts of the world who joined Sadako and Atsuko in expressing our hopes for peace, for friendship, for the nuclear ban, um, uh, for the environmental and social justice. And uh, at this point, Kate and I, I thought that we would like to show you a very short, very short three, three minute documentary of an existing work inspired by the story of Sadako. It is called 2000 Paper Cranes, a memorial to Sadako Sasaki. And it's by um, the American, the US contemporary artist, Jeff Brown. We felt it very poignant to, to include it today, not because it will be featured in our um, forthcoming exhibition, Peace Cranes, but precisely because it has found its permanent home on the office walls of Matsui Kazumi, the mayor of the city of uh, Hiroshima. An ancient Japanese legend says that whoever folds 1,000 paper cranes will be granted a wish. I get two. Sadako Sasaki was a child victim of the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. She was confined to a hospital battling leukemia at the age of 12. Most of her time was spent folding paper cranes. After a while, Sadako did finally complete more than 1,000 paper cranes to fulfill the legend. But unfortunately, her wish to be well again was never granted. On the morning of October 25, 1955, Sadako Sasaki died at the hospital with her family by her side. Setting out to honor her, I started an art project. Over the course of five years, I invested over 70 hours into folding 2,000 cranes of varying shades of gray. Even after I finished the folding, I knew I was only halfway done. To display the cranes, I attached them to a board one at a time, paying careful attention to their order. It was years in the making, but my art project to memorialize Sadaku was finally complete. After building a custom frame, there was only one thing left to do, make my two wishes. My first wish is that people not let greed or hatred fuel their actions, but empathy and compassion instead. My second wish would be to have this piece hanging in Hiroshima, where I hope to inspire others. This is not only a memorial to Sadaku, but to all the children and innocent victims of war. Now um, that we have reached the very final part of, um, uh, of our first Peace Cranes pre-exhibition event today, I would like to remind you of the other three pre-exhibition events, uh, all featuring works by Michael Mears. Uh, one of the reasons to approach Michael for, the, uh, for this pre-exhibition series was that as an artist uh, and committed peace activist, he is familiar to all um, at p and and our partner organizations from uh, his solo stage play called This Evil Thing, uh, which is now available as a lockdown film, as he calls it, portraying the stories of Britain's uh, World War I uh, conscientious objectors. And Michael's um, uh, play the, This Evil Thing, or The Evil Thing, is very much um, in line with uh, another ongoing uh, contemporary art initiative 
at PNJ, uh, featuring the artist and sculptor Kate Ive. Uh, as part of this project, PNJ is leading a, a consortium of organizations to erect a bronze memorial to conscientious objectors in Edinburgh's Princess Street Gardens. And it will be the first time peacemakers, peace builders, will be recognized in the public space, in the public domain, alongside the 37 war memorials in Edinburgh. Yes, one to 37, indeed, I hear you say. So firstly, do join us online tonight at uh, uh, 7.15, um, the doors, the doors open, uh, for a start at 7.30. Uh, this will be your second opportunity to see Michael, uh, but it will be uh, and your, your second Peace Cranes pre-exhibition event. Um, it's called The Priest's Tale. Uh, join us to see Michael and fellow artist uh, Chihiro Ono on the violin, performing live from the theatre stage of Sun's Films Studios in London. The Priest's Tale is written by Michael um, and uh, inspired by John Percy's seminal book now, a Penguin classic called Hiroshima that was published back in 1945. So following this, another tale follows. It's called The Priest, um, it's called The Doctor's Tale. This is your third opportunity to see Michael performing live again, but this time sharing the same theatre stage of Sands Film Studios in London. Uh, with the actor Leo Ashizawa. And again, Chihiro Ono will make, make an appearance on the violin. This play, this tale, is set in Nagasaki in 19, 1945, um, and it was live stream on the actual day on the 9th of August 2020, five years later, again at 7.30, to mark the 75th anniversary of the second atomic bombing on Japan, this time Nagasaki. And in fact, some of, the, of you may know that um, this catastrophe is referred to as the error or the mistake on the epitaph of the, of the memorial monument uh, for Hiroshima's City of Peace. But um, you can be the first to see that this film collage um, of extracts and images uh, from the making of another play. Um, it's uh, called The Mistake aptly entitled new play by Michael again and performed by the duo Michael and Yuri, um, Yuri Yamanaka, whom we've just seen in the, the message. This new lockdown film, again, if we use um, um, this term by in, kind of invented uh, by Michael, this lockdown film of the mistake, uh, which was edited by the acclaimed theatre director Jatinder Verma, will screen as part uh, of our final Peace Screens pre-exhibition event. That's on the 22nd of August. And this final event is actually part of uh, this year's Digital Just Festival of Human Rights and Social Justice, which was rescheduled to take part, um, to take place entirely online uh, this year. And, uh, and it's supported by the equally digital um, and scaled down Edinburgh International Fringe Festival. Uh, following this festival film showing um, of the mistake on the same date, on the 22nd of August, four, four o'clock, I, I think it is, we would like to invite you to take part in a live post-show um, Q&A with uh, Michael, with uh, Yuri, um, with the theatre director, Jatender Verma, as well as uh, Heder, my co-curator for the Peace Cranes exhibition, and myself. Do join us to find out how the mistake, um, actually the, the story, the mistake interweaves this, the um, three stories actually of the, the survivor, the Bakusha, uh, of a scientist and a soldier. Um, and it, it creates a compelling, really compelling drama uh, and what happens when, when scientific discoveries unlock the power of nature. And at this point, uh, over to you, Brian, for this, this final um, call to action. Okay, thank you all so much for coming along to our Origami Peace Cranes workshop. Um, I wanted, first of all, to show you my crane I made today. There you can see I've written peace on the wing. 
just as Sadako uh, said she'd done. You can write that on yours too and, and write a wish if you want. Um, and if you take a photo of that, of your crane uh, or of yourself with your crane and tweet it and uh, tag us at edindpandj, that's at E-D-I-N-P-A-N-D-J, or email us at contact at peaceandjustice.org.uk. We'll share that on our social media. Um, and if you want to keep making cranes and make a uh, hundred or maybe even a thousand um, and pack them flat, if you flatten the crane like this, take another crane and flatten it too and just pop it in like this and you can do any number in a row like that and put, put them in, in an envelope or in a, in a shoebox um, and send those to us uh, at the Peace and Justice Center in Edinburgh and you can find our, our address on our website. Um, to keep up with developments uh, on the Nuclear Weapons Ban Treaty, uh, you can follow ICANN at Nuclear Ban or hash Nuclear Ban on Twitter um, and find them on Facebook. Um, and if you've been inspired by uh, the workshop today and the other exhibition, pre-exhibition events uh, and want to support the project with a donation, just go to our website, click the donate button or go to the become a member page. Uh, when you make your donation, you can indicate uh, you want to support Peace, peace Cranes. Um, the Peace and Justice Center has lots of projects promoting nonviolence, peace building, conflict resolution, and human rights and ecological sustainability uh, and disarmament generally. Um, we're working to create a memorial to conscientious objectors and all who oppose war in, in Edinburgh's Princess Street Gardens which is a World Heritage Site visited by millions of people annually. Um, this uh, opposing war memorial will be in the form of a bronze peace tree with a granite bench and will be a space for reflection on alternatives to war in the midst of eight war memorials. We run peace builders programs in three or four schools in Scotland every term. There's a Foundation Cooperative Games and Conflict Resolution course and a Deeper Collaborative Classrooms course or program. Uh, and our trained facilitators work with pupils and teachers providing training in nonviolent communication, restorative practice, uh, peace, uh, peer mediation, and circle keeping to create a sustainable practice of restorative justice and a culture of peace. If you'd like to come, uh, us to come to your school, uh, tell your head teacher uh, or just contact us directly. Um, we're also part of Don't Bank on the Bomb Scotland, campaigning for banks and pension funds to divest for nuclear weapons. So that's another way you can get involved and take action um, to bring about nuclear disarmament. Um, we offer uh, placements for students and we need volunteers all the time. Uh, find out more about all our programs and how you can support our work uh, or get involved at peaceandjustice.org.uk. So thanks for joining us um, and oh, hope to see you at the uh, other Peace Cranes exhibition, pre-exhibition events this year and at the exhibition itself next year. If you missed the live stream, you can watch again. Just go to the Origami, Peace Cr the Origami Cranes Project page on our website or to our Facebook events page, at in Peace and Justice Center Stroke Events. Peace.